Car crashes are the leading cause of preventable death and injury to most age groups in the US. I'm stressing the preventable here in that that's a key piece of this. So we're gonna check for tightness by pulling up on the straps. They're now snug on the baby's legs. And a properly installed car seat is the best chance at making sure that the child escapes as unharmed as possible. And we're gonna check here. Just one finger should fit between the straps and the baby's body. I'm Dr. Elisa Baer. I'm a pediatrician and the co-founder of The Car Seat Lady. The company itself is a advocacy organization. We try to keep children as safe as possible in the car and for travel. Most seats are too loose and most children are too loose in their seats. Those are the most common errors that we see. We want to make sure it moves less than an inch on the seat cushion. And so when you check, you can see that it's not moving on the seat cushion. Before 1980, you could sell a cardboard box and call it a car seat and that was fine, that, that was allowed. My mom tells me that I was in a car seat in the car, but the car seat wasn't actually attached to the car. It was just put in the car. Debbie, my mother, has done much more in terms of uh, advocating for legislation than I or Emily have done. We realized that we needed to do a better job of protecting our, you know, both adults as well as our children in motor vehicles. She got involved uh, in the early 80s when the laws were just being passed across the U.S. and the first goal was just to raise awareness so that people were putting their child in a seat. And then as people started using seats, then the focus shifted not only to getting people to use a seat, but getting them to use their seat properly. Elise and I were friends, so we would hang out together on the weekend, and her mom would have all this car seat stuff hanging around, car seats and pamphlets and things like that in their house. I think we were in fourth grade, and that was my first picture with the crash test dummies um, at that event. We had to do an internship for a month, and my mother had been hounding me the entire time. She said, just work in the nursery in the same hospital where she works and teach the parents what to do with their car seats before they go home. I didn't have any other ideas, so I put that down. And uh, we're now 23 years later, and kind of the rest is history. I had used to go into these you know, preschool classes to teach the kids. And one time I was in one of the supermarkets and I was pushing my cart along and there's this little girl sitting in a cart and she goes, she looks at me and then she goes, Mommy, Mommy, there's the car seat lady. And that's how I got my name. It was just fun, you know, it was interesting to learn about these things. Um, and especially when you get into the more complicated situations, trying to fit two kids next to each other in the car, or even three children or more, it's like a puzzle. You know, it's like you have to figure out what's going to fit together in the best way. And I love puzzles. I'm going to attach the rigid latch to the lower anchor in the vehicle. It's the first time that I was taken really seriously as an adult. I was walking into patients' rooms. Uh, I had a badge. Uh, I was introducing myself as an expert, which by that time I was. I went to NYU for medical school and continued the car seat lady through that. And then when I left to go to Philadelphia to do my residency in pediatrics at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, I asked Emily, who I trust implicitly, to join us. And I said, sure. Uh, I had a full-time job at the time, and I was also in grad school myself. And so it was a real, uh, like a labor of love, I think. We were always good partners in school. Like we would do school projects together. So it wasn't a surprise um, that we worked well together. So I'm gonna squeeze on these until I see the red, and then I'm gonna push the seat in. You can see already, it's very tight. I think the most powerful moments that I've experienced have been when a parent has called up and said, I just got into a crash and my child had no injuries. And that's every parent's dream, is that their child is as unharmed as possible. You could have literally the best car seat in the world and the best car in the world, but if you don't have the car seat installed properly and if you don't have the child in the car seat properly, it's not gonna work. I have definitely been contacted by families who have been in car crashes. Um, and everyone, thank God, has been okay. And that definitely, you know, keeps you in the job because you see the actual impact of your work in saving lives. Given my expertise in this subject area, I could keep more healthy kids healthy 
by being the car seat lady than I could in my role as a pediatrician working in a hospital. Elisa is a super passionate person and it's really nice to work with somebody who is so into what they do. She is all in and totally dedicated. With the start of the pandemic, people's needs changed, and so we started doing virtual consultations. We talk to them about how to strap the baby in properly. We go over how the car seat installs. We demonstrate, then we watch them do it. Hold them lower down, right above the chest clip. That's it, and pull up. Pull up. That's gonna get the slack out of the legs, uh, out of the belly, and up to the shoulders. Good, now okay. let go and pull the tail. You guys have questions, you know how to reach out to me. Okay, great. Parents will often think that when their child's feet touch the back of the vehicle seat or the child is sitting crisscross or frog-legged, that that's an indication that the child is too tall for rear-facing. Interestingly, the child's leg length has nothing to do with whether a child is too tall for rear-facing. For most seats, the rear-facing limit is based on the seated height. So when the child's head is about an inch below the top of the seat, that is typically when they're too tall. This is an important part uh, because it's something you do every single time you use the car seat. Tush the deepest part of the seat. We're gonna do the buckles. And we're gonna set it so that the straps are over the baby's hips. What seat should I be choosing for my car? How do I fit three across in my car? Uh, the expertise that we have as nationally certified child passenger safety instructors, it gives us the framework to start answering those more complex questions through our website, through our YouTube channel, through our Instagram. I'm interacting with parents that I don't even know their name, but I'm making a difference in their ability to keep their child safe. When they leave here, they go, wow, I'm so glad I came. Once my slack is up here, then I can pull the strap at the bottom. Cars are designed for adults. They're not designed for children. The chest clip comes up to the armpit level, and we are ready to ride. My goal is just to do everything I can to, to save their lives in, in, a, in a car crash. My name is Debbie. I'm Dr. Elisa Bear. My name is Emily, and I'm a scary mommy.